Hi, Mike Kennedy with you. Uh, Father Brown, this is a series set in England, written in England, uh, and it comes over here on uh, the uh, educational, you know, PBS, whatever channels those are for you. And then uh, it's on Netflix, series one through, seasons one through six. Then I'm experimenting, I'm going to do a separate uh, video on uh, doing a trial of BritBox. The last season, the 2019 season is in that. This is December 2019. So, uh, we'll talk about it. So first, the series is written by this man named Chesterton. And he's considered to be uh, a Catholic theologian, okay? So he writes these series of uh, book, uh, stories, quite a few of them. Uh, I downloaded... Uh, a PDF and it was 1400 pages long so that's all these stories put together I guess which like I have a feeling they were probably released one at a time and then later they were compiled into books I could be wrong about that but so the series has some uh, good things and it has some really bad things <laughs> okay like everything that, that's in the world they do preserve the character Father Brown is always ultimately interested in the salvation of the person's soul. So he's always trying to get him to confess and repent at the end. Uh, and often there's the do the right, they have to do the right thing because if someone else charged, someone else is going to suffer. And the only way they can set things as right as they possibly can be is to also confess to the police. So that's kind of a, a common theme of the ending. And uh, it's funny, I've read the first story in the, 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 the actually written by Chesterton, and it was about the Blue Cross, and that, uh, that small story got kind of blown up into this hour program. And, uh, you know, a lot was changed, a lot was added. But uh, it was interesting in the book, this guy, there's, he's got this kind of uh, criminal that he runs into called Flambeau, and he's a master criminal. And so, even in this first thing, Father Brown outsmarts him, and this this master criminal is really surprised that Father Brown knows so much about a uh, crime. And of course, what he doesn't know is Father Brown has been listening to confessions all his life, and has pretty much learned every trick in the book. So it's kind of an amusing twist on the idea, so that uh, something that Flambeau tried to do is a as a scam, uh, Father Brown immediately knew what was happening and could counteract that. And even though he didn't know this character, Flambeau, is dressed as a priest, pretending to be a priest, being, uh, you know, fooling everyone else, he doesn't fool Father Brown. This is in the book, of course, because they have a discussion about reason, and the the uh, Flambeau, disguised as a as a priest, doesn't believe in reason, and of course. There's a big thing about Catholicism that you believe in reason, that our faith is reasonable, and that the existence of God can be reasoned out. Maybe not necessarily proved in the laboratory, but reasoned out. So he knows immediately this character isn't really a priest. And so he, he knows that he's got to be this other guy, Flambeau, who's tall. They make a big point of that in the show. So if he's over six foot four, you just have to single out for suspects and when shorter than that. But so then we go to the TV series. And like I said, I haven't read enough, but in the first story, there's no uh, Mrs. McCarthy, who's just like the church secretary, who is an excellent character. And then they have a uh, uh, this woman character that's always kind of hanging around. And uh, in the first few seasons, it was this rather rich uh, woman that's in royalty, and she's very <coughs> promiscuous and things. And that gets in the show. And then later that character seems to leave and she's replaced with another kind of, with her niece, who's who's kind of like that in a way, but not, you know, so, so immoral. But the interesting thing here is that they've, they've twisted the character of Father Brown into something more politically correct. And what we see in this constantly is, like there's a show, <coughs> And the theme of it, evidently, 
there's this house and there are some women living there with this guy and his wife. He thinks one of them's a daughter and different things. Well, eventually as the plot goes on, he figures out uh, that they're married. They're all married to this one man. It's polygamy. And uh, Father Brown says, who am I to judge? No Catholic priest or Chester's then would, especially back in this set, I think, in like I say, around uh, the year I was born, so 66 years ago, 1953, uh, would would really say that. <laughs> they just wouldn't say that. Because you got to see, see, priests are trained to know what is sin and what isn't, the, what the church teachings are. Uh, and I don't think you'd have a priest in England back in 1953 in public kind of saying with other people listening, well, it kind of doesn't matter what you do sexually. And we see this later. I, I, uh, I got this brick box trial specifically so I could watch this new season of Father Brown. And there's uh, two other shows I'm going to mention too in a sec in the Brit Box video. But uh, <coughs> the first one I watch is, has this really strong Christian message of the guy, of the priest at the end talking to the person that seems to be hopeless and saying, no, your sins are forgiven. Jesus, I mean, the Father sent a son to save the world. He can save you. So there's a really strong message here. Then the second show, he, he slips back into this idea that sexual memor immorally, immorality is okay. And, you know, I've got to explain what talking points are. If you don't know what talking points are, if someone distributes to you arguments to use against your opponent, and very often times the person writing the talking points really doesn't know what they're talking about. And this becomes incredibly obvious when you talk about sexual immorality. And so the two, uh, two talking points, this idea of who am I to judge? And it's like, no, we are, you know, you are called to judge sin. We are to live holy lives. So we have to know what is sin and what isn't. We are to judge sin. We can't judge the people, though. That's the idea. But then this is the talking point that comes up over and over, and so it's so silly. Well, and the Father Brown character says this when he's confronted with this situation of that uh, appears is going to be acted out of sexual immorality, and he says, "Well, the person says, well, isn't this isn't this a horrible sin?" And Father Brown says, "Well, you know, the Old Testament says you can't wear fabric woven of two cloths, two." Two materials so you had to have like a wool or or linen or whatever your clothes were made out of they had to be made out of that one garment had to be made out of one thing and that was to symbolize the purity of worship to the one God that the the Israelites were to uh, follow and but to see it used this is a typical talking point that's been presented by these people who are trying to argue with Christians about sexual immorality is it's meaningless because they don't understand. They don't understand the Old Testament and the New Testament and how Christ fulfills all of the laws of the Old Testament. So we have the ceremonial laws drop away, but actually the moral laws become much, much stricter. In other words, in the Old Testament, you can divorce, you can do this, uh, but in the New Testament, all of a sudden, you can't look at a member of the opposite sex and, like, lust after them, want to have sex with them, imagine it, and do all of these things. You've already committed adultery. So it's like, wow. You know, we go from the idea of uh, being faithful to your wife in your actions of the Old Testament, or, or your husband, to and having divorce, to the New Testament where there's no divorce, and you can't even, you can't even have it in your heart that you want to break God's commands about sexuality. So for this argument to be pulled out, the ceremonial argument to be put out, or sometimes people say, well, you, you can't eat pork either, right? Or you go to hell. It's like people don't understand. You know, they don't understand scripture. They don't understand Christ. They don't understand the church. They kind of don't understand anything. But this is the thing you see. is this confusion about the Old and the New Testament that gets voiced to some kind of argument and there's no argument at all because these talking points were written by someone who didn't know Christ. 
you know they were written by someone who pulled things out of scripture out of context and has no idea about the revelation of Christ and what he what the salvation is that he offers us so you know that's one thing bad about it but you know the show is generally written quite well the characters act really well I think you know sometimes he, the, they have the goofy cop you know and uh, other police they've ha had some roles that have changed the police man has changed a couple times the police captain so uh, but uh, it is a good show except for that and you know I don't know if they keep bringing that op up that springs up the sexual immorality every once in a while but when they're not doing that the show is fairly good and decent and uh, it uh, has a good plot you know plot twist whatever all those things you want and it still usually has this message that you know God will forgive if we are truly repentant and confess our sins uh, if you've watched Father Brown, uh, why don't you comment below? Bye.